بارنو بين ريبورت ريبورت كيف عم يصير التقدم شكرا Thank you very much, Manuel. It's the turn of uh, Ms. Rana Haddad from uh, Banque Libane Francaise. Banque Libane Francaise established in 1967. It has 54 branches in Lebanon and branches abroad, including Cyprus, Syria, France, Switzerland, with representatives in Dubai, Lagos, and Baghdad. Uh, Ms. Rana Haddad biography, uh, Rana, ch uh, she will change the mood. Ma'anda her presentation, she's ready to share her uh, knowledge with you verbally. Rana Haddad holds the position of head of corporate social responsibility within the group communications and customer experience division at Banque Libano Francaise. She is in charge of coordinating the CSR at BLF and its four pillars marketplace, workplace, community, and environment. Prior to joining the bank in 2006, she worked as a CSR expert at the UNDP, UNV support to local governance project, as well as a social reporter at the Daily Star. Yeah, mama. Mrs. Haddad graduated in communications, arts with a double emphasis in journalism and radio TV film with distinction from the Lebanese American University. So welcome, Ms. Haddad. Thank you. Uh, Sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm extremely pleased to be here amongst you today uh, to share Banque Libano Francais journey in institutionalizing CSR and show you how it moved from peripheral to being embedded in the core of our business strategy. Uh, to make a long story short, let me begin by telling you that Banque Libano Francaise has been conducting its operations in a socially responsible manner. Since its early inception, it has been fostering economic growth, giving back to the community, and all of this, uh, even before the term corporate social responsibility became a fashionable trend without the CSR label. Uh, but as you know, over the years, uh, there has been a lot of confusion. And today, there even still is confusion at some points. Uh, on the one hand, between philanthropy, all what we call charity work, sponsoring, donations, and on the other hand, corporate social responsibility. So the confusion was not only at the bank's level, but I'm talking more about, uh, generally speaking, at the local level and even on the international level. So we wanted to put an end to this confusion. This is why we decided in 2010, we decided back then, to make a clear cut between all of our PR activities and our uh, CSR activities, you know, to give CSR its true meaning and uh, have it institutionalized. So we created during that same year our CSR unit at the heart of the communications and customer experience uh, division. And we formul uh, formulated a strategy which is actually a holistic approach, okay? Because CSR, as we said, is not only philanthropy. And this approach is based on four pillars, four major pillars, the workplace, you know, employees are key to any organization and especially to us. Uh, the marketplace, of course, the community, and last but not least by any means, the environment. But we were not content to stop here. We wanted even to take it a step further. And we wanted uh, CSR not to remain a function that is only at the heart of a CSR unit. We wanted to embed it in every business unit. So what did we do? Uh, we were looking for a framework. We wanted to look for a framework to be able to implement it uh, across the entire bank, to have strategic CSR. And during that year, it was in 2013, we did hit the nail on its head. This is when we actually applied uh, and we were selected by uh, Libnor as a pilot organization for the uptake of ISO 26000 guidelines on social responsibility. So what was the next step to do? Now that we were selected, we immediately appointed a project team comprised of uh, members, uh, heads of the following divisions, uh, communications, HR, 
international and organization and strategic planning. And with the support of two experts, uh, Mr. Shamas being one of them, we conducted a gap analysis. And the gap analysis was a long exercise of going over seven core subjects, really analyzing them issue by issue and discussing whether at our bank they were being implemented or not. And if yes, if we should take it a step further or whether certain issues were perhaps not relevant and to the, uh, given the local realities. So, and you would be astonished to know that often uh, organizations address things, uh, are applying things, and they are not even aware that these are socially responsible behaviors. So in our case, we also discovered something along the way. Um, following that, we also conducted a stakeholder engagement survey because we also wanted to see what our stakeholders, their views were concerning social uh, responsibility. But uh, something very important that resulted from all of this, what we did, it was actually uh, the development of an action plan, a long-term action plan, because SR is, is a journey, to be implemented by 2019. And this action plan contains something very important, which addresses the organizational governance of, any, of BLF. So we really, we really, it was very key for us to work on this aspect and develop it, to have, uh, how shall I say, CSR weaven into the fabric of, of the bank. And this comprised a series of actions. I will give you a few examples. The first thing, an immediate thing, was to amend our mission statement and to include in it uh, sustainability and shared value, to show our commitment that beyond making uh, looking at the economic consideration, we also look at the social and the environmental aspect, which is very, very key. So we did integrate it in our mission statement. It's our way of making a public commitment. The second thing we did was create a CSR committee headed by our CEO. And allow me to pause here a little bit to stress on the fact that without management commitment, it is extremely difficult for anyone who wishes to really do a serious CSR to go forward. You must have management commitment. And we were very, very lucky to have management support from the very, very beginning. This is something that I want really to stress on. Thirdly, uh, as much as the management is important, we had to have the buy-in from our entire team because all businesses were involved. So we launched uh, a session of uh, trainings. So we conducted, we started uh, training all of our employees, raising awareness about what is CSR. And uh, you would be amazed, many new recruits often haven't even heard about the word CSR. Also, I know that at universities they started integrating this. So it's really important to make sure everyone is speaking the same language here. Um, uh, fourthly, uh, we did integrate them in job descriptions. Following the trainings, CSR is integrated into the job descriptions of employees, into their objectives, and uh, during the annual performance review, it is taken into consideration to be able to, to, measure, to measure that. Another thing we did was also, we are in the process of reviewing our procedures to see uh, where we can uh, integrate CSR in the, in the process. We are currently also uh, about to issue a human uh, rights policy that we have drafted, which should also guide uh, not only uh, behavior of internal stakeholders, but also express our wish that uh, suppliers or clients follow the same path. Because we know we do not employ any child labor, but what about our suppliers? What about uh, people, partners we deal with? So it's very important to have this written to uh, increase awareness on CSR in our sphere of influence as much as we, as we can. And we also, in that same line of thinking, we are integrating a sustainability clause in our contract with suppliers uh, to really sensitize them and tell them, look, we are uh, following ISO 26000 principles, uh, but uh, 
we would like you to do the same and we will favor on the long run suppliers who behave, uh, who have a certain standard, not necessarily ISO 26000, but who show that they are going into, into this direction. Uh, another thing I would like to say is our uh, sustainable procurement policy, which we are also in the process of finalizing, which will guide our purchases. And uh, you mentioned awareness before, so we are not only uh, raising awareness internally, but also externally. And our presence here today is uh, part of our objective to spread awareness on, on CSR. Last but not least, I would like to, <coughs> excuse me, I would like to add uh, that in October 2014, we responded to Mr. Khaled's Assar request to join the United Nations Global uh, Compact. We become signatories and uh, committed to follow 10 principles in the areas of human rights, labor rights, anti-corruption, and uh, environment. And we even took that further by becoming members in 2015 of the local network uh, steering committee, 11 uh, companies, that are leaders in the in CSR. So this is to go back, someone from the audience asked before why uh, uh, businesses weren't collaborating. So this is the exact example of a tool to co collaborate. So in this, you have also other banks, you have NGOs, exactly, yes, yeah, I know you. <laughs> Exactly. And uh, uh, a launching event was done at uh, AUB uh, last September to uh, also try to bring as many people on board and promote CSR and the global uh, compact uh, at large. Um, I, before I conclude, I've been given a strict uh, 10 minutes <laughs> time limit, um, which I want to respect to leave room for discussion. Uh, I would just like to uh, tell you uh, it's very important the uh, management commitment. It's also very important to have a framework and uh, nobody should get intimidated by the complexity of any framework. For the ISO, for example, uh, at first sight looks really complex, but uh, it should be taken at one step at a time. Uh, <laughs> at one step at a time, uh, and just bear in mind that uh, you have to start somewhere. So it's a journey, it's a progressive uh, journey. Enjoyable journey. Enjoyable journey, very enjoyable journey, yes. And you have to have the passion for it, of course, to, to be able, the determination. Okay, and as the Chinese wisely say it, <laughs> the man who lifts a mountain is the one who starts carrying small stones away. So if you can apply this to CSR, it would also be my advice. Thank you. Uh, before I ask the audience uh, about their questions, I have a question. Could you please share with us an example or two on your CSR initiatives? Okay. Uh, thank you for asking me this question. I would like to shed some light uh, on an initiative that is very dear to our heart. It's our partnership with MasterCard and the United Nations World Food uh, Program. It's an example of financial inclusion. Uh, it's actually the development of uh, a card that allows to meet the food requirements of Syrian refugees. It's a prepaid debit card that replaces the traditional food, uh, paper food vouchers. So, and this is important because it allows them to be financially included and gives them freedom on when to purchase what type of, uh, of food. And it also helps have transparency over, uh, over the food uh, donations. So this initiative is an example of how there is a link between a core business and a need in the community. So there is a match between a need and a bank as a solution uh, provider. And this initiative has earned us three international awards. 
And thanks to this initiative, we were also ranked in 2013, it, the initiative was ranked as the fourth uh, force from the initiative that, ha uh, that, have ha uh, that have made a big difference in the world, that have changed the world. And this according to Mashable, the world's third biggest uh, blogger. If I may add quickly another example, something we're proud of. Uh, we really uh, value equality at Banque Libre Française, uh, gender equality. We're 54% uh, women. <laughs> Not only that, 51% are branch managers. 51% <laughs> middle managers. It's equal. We don't discriminate, no, because we, but it's based on performance. Hmm? Only sorry, discrimination uh, against male will <laughs> <look here. laughs> And 25% uh, of the general management are also female, leading some of the major divisions, which is something we're proud of. And because of that, uh, and the general manager, exactly, the only one must vote. Yes. So a lot of reasons to, to we are proud about. And uh, we have to, to help women have a work-life balance. We are one of the few, or maybe the only, actually, bank uh, who has a special schedule for mothers to allow them to balance between uh, their work and their families. All mothers uh, who have children under the age of 10 are allowed to leave at 3 o'clock, uh, compensate on Saturdays. <laughs> and I'm one of those mothers, so I still have a year to go to benefit from this, and I can tell you it's very convenient. Excellent. <laughs> That's good news. We will ask Follow. The third baby, eh? I'm Tham Soon, Al Injab. Family planning. Uh, last but not least, uh, any questions for Rana before we start with Mr. Mahideen? Yes, please. Last question. Rada Hassan, CSR Lebanon. Uh, I want to ask about the Circular 134 issued by the Central Bank recently on customer protection in the banking and financial sector, and uh, which promotes customer rights and transparency, financial literacy, among other aspects. So um, since the customers are the main stakeholders of a bank and uh, directly or caring for their uh, interests directly links to the core business of a bank, so do you, th do you have a role uh, in uh, promoting the, this circular inside the bank? Or, and if not, do you think that you should have a role in this? Uh, thank you for this question. Actually, at Banque Libre Française, we established a customer experience department uh, two years before the issuing of this circular. And uh, BLF has always had a customer-centric approach. This is why the marketplace is also one of our main pillars. Uh, now, you're asking me if I should be having a role in this. As a CSR person, I coordinate across several units. But the main of CSR is not that the CSR person uh, does the entire implementation and uh, uh, it has a role, yes, exactly. But there are people who are also responsible for implementing this. So really, they are in, uh, in the position to, to, to do that. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Rana. You were an inspiration uh, for both, for us, <laughs> with Ms. Baboyan, for the ladies. <laughs> uh, <laughs>